Hey, Vlad here, devinsidey.com. Welcome to another video. In the previous couple of videos, we rewrote the core part of our application and we also rewrote the persistence layer of our application. Today, we're going to do the same thing to the delivery layer. Let's get right to it. As I already mentioned in my previous videos, I already prepared uh, the uh, you know the delivery mechanism uh, quite well for this uh, for this uh, series, and therefore the rewrite is going to be very very uh, smooth. Okay, so let's go in there. So it's called controller. As you can see, it's inside of delivery. We're gonna do the same trick as before. We're gonna go and do F2, controller old, save all, and let's hope that everybody's happy, and everybody's happy. Let's go and copy paste it and let's call it just controller, controller like this. And now we're going to remove that. It's just going to be called controller, controller like this for some F and it's going to return an F of unit like this. And therefore it doesn't even need these, these brands like this. So there we go. This is the controller. Um, let's close all the others. Uh, let's do controller, controller old. This one, I believe if I do control enter, it will do that. Ah, perfect. All right, cool. Now, before we actually even um, start working on it, uh, we're, going to, we're going to look at, uh, at it over here and obviously it needs the boundary, right? So this is how the delivery mechanism of our application accesses the core of our applications through this boundary, okay? And you know, it needs the pattern and whatever. And you know, we could, we could do this part, but it also um, uses something like a fancy console or something like random. We're gonna start with random. Now, um, it uses random if we go down over here uh, to generate a random color. So if you remember, I can actually uh, run it real quick, right? So because our code still works, right? It's still running like because we did like the whole renamings, we kept like all the versions and we can still uh, run the old version. So as you can see over here, the the color for this line is being picked at random. And this is this is how it's happening, okay? It's just like a list of, of colors or a vector of colors. And uh, you know, we're picking uh, a, a random number uh, that goes up to color.size and then we just pipe in it into, into colors. If you remember uh, pipe, I actually have it over here. It's, it's part of Scala Util Chaining, but I prefer to define it uh, myself. It's just this uh, thing that does like this for you, right? So instead of ABA, you can say A.pipe AB, okay? Uh, right, so let's go back. So we're gonna start with this uh, random thing, okay? So uh, we're gonna go to random, which is over here. And we're gonna do the same trick as before. Let me switch back to compiling. Let's create way less space over here. I like this. All right, so it's gonna be random. So we're gonna go over here and do a random old. Same, same good old trick. All right, random old and uh, close the dependency graph as well. Go over here, copy paste, uh, random like this. And in this particular case, there is no need to like remove everything because it's everything over here is, um, is so tiny. So uh, random is just going to be random. Okay. And uh, it's going to need some F. Therefore, it's going to produce an int with some F. And therefore, this is going to be a random of F, which is going to come in over here, as always. And it's going to do a new random, random of F like this. Therefore, this is going to be an F. Okay, and as many times, you know, mentioned, like every time you want to like, uh, you know, redo a thing or, uh, you know, you want, you, you're touching something mutable, something side affecting, you just need to delay things. Okay, and therefore you need over here, you need effect, effect sync, and therefore you're gonna say f dot delay with this thing. Okay, and for that to work, we just need to import cats right? So that we have access to the cat's effect um, sync. By the way, one of the things that I forgot to mention in the build, in the very, um, on the second video, yeah, in the second video, uh, we added, we went to the persistence layer and we said that it has a dependency on cat's effect, but we didn't do this for the delivery layer, but we actually need to. So let's go and do that. Okay, let's wait for SBT to be happy. And then we can import the changes. And there we go, import the changes. All right, now it's gonna keep like jumping around a little bit, uh, but essentially it's it's gonna be fine over here once once Bloop uh, finishes uh, installing it, compiling, it's gonna be it's gonna be fine. Uh, for now, let's go and look at uh, what was the other thing. 
It uses a fancy console. Okay, so it doesn't go and just do does like print lines. It goes and does like fancy console, you know, get string line or um, uh, gets was was prompt or put success or you know, uh, you know, it does, you know, it prints out success in in green and and so on and so on. Okay, so uh, let's go into the fancy console. Uh, pa -pa 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 -pa. Fancy console, fancy console, fancy console, old. Yes, there we go. Save all. All right, let's go and make sure that everybody's happy. Everybody's happy, Bloop is happy, SBT is, SBT is dead because I restarted VS Code. Uh, but it should be fine. Uh, let's go over here, copy that. This is the fancy console new. And therefore, everywhere over here, we're just gonna say fancy console like this. This should make everybody happy. Okay, CD main, compile everything. All right, more space, more space. All right, so we can pretty much like go in inline, um, change all of it. Okay, so uh, we're gonna need an F over here. And therefore we're going to, Okay, let me make sure that I don't make this mistake again. So it's gonna be an F over here and over here like uh, this. It's gonna be F of whatever, like this. Okay, so therefore, uh, we're gonna do def DSL. And uh, by the way, notice that uh, both random and, uh, and this fancy console, the DSL itself is now implicit. And this is like one of those things where it's like hard to decide like what to make it implicit, what not. What I, what I usually do is if it's possible to make it implicit, I do make it implicit, but it doesn't mean that I'm gonna use it implicitly, okay? In this particular case, we will, but um, yeah, it's one of those things that uh, I don't have an answer for yet. Um, all right, so yeah, so this is how I noticed, right? So this DSL is also implicit. Uh, all right, so it needs an F and um, it needs a console. Oh uh, yeah, let, let's do this, let's do this. It needs a console. And by the way, notice that it's probably not going to need sync because sync is already in the console. And this is one of those things that I mentioned in the previous video is that you want to push sync out as much as possible, right? So the console is already, you know, doing like the whole delaying. I don't care about delaying over here, right? So I can, al I can also, I can already just go and use the console. Okay, so we're gonna have the fancy console of F so this guy is going to be an f and therefore it's just going to be a val okay now these guys are going to have the same trick like that it's going to be an f of this of that of that like this all right i'm not sure why there's no empty line over here uh let's maybe actually go to fancy console old and i don't know how this happened i probably scale fmt uh broke down this line uh, all right, so let's see. So if I'm right, so first of all, like these like consoles, they will just become F because this is how the console has been injected now. And now all the pipes, which is just two, should be converted to maps. And I believe that this should be fine. Okay, maybe we would need we would still need map. Um, so we still need functor. So let's go and say import cats and import uh, cats implicits. Like this, and I believe that this should be enough. Um, ba, 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 ba. Whoa! Console does not take time parameters. Oh, it's probably it's probably thinking about the Scala console. Oh, we haven't done console yet. Oh man! Uh, all right, let's comment out this whole thing. I should have, you know. Once I saw that it uses the console, we should have done like this, this trick to the console. Okay, so let's go and let's go to the console and let's do the same trick. Uh, console uh, old. Okay, save all. Go to console old, copy paste, rename. Same trick as always, just console. Like this, and this one is gonna be console now. Console now, and something is not happy, which means, oh, okay, so it's all good now. Okay, this is all good. Bloop is also happy. It's all good. All right, so we're going to do the same trick over here. So it's going to be an F. Uh, so this is going to be uh, wrapped into an F. These guys as well. All of them just wrapped into Fs like this. So this is going to be an F over here. 
I'm not sure what it's going to need. Uh, it's going to be just F. It's going to be just F. I'm noticing an empty line over here. Uh, I'm not sure where these empty lines come from. There we go. Um, all right, console. And there we go. Uh, right, so this is going to be an F of string. So this is going to be a val. Uh, these guys are going to be wrapped into Fs. All right, and as, as already like you know spoiled in in, in fancy console, um, this guy is going to need a sync, right? Because it's going to delay like all of this all of this stuff. Okay, so it's going to need effect dot sync. Therefore, it's going to need import gets import gets implicits like this, and therefore uh, pretty much everywhere over here, it's just going to say f delay this whole thing. That's pretty much it. Yay, compiles first try. Uh, fancy console, let's do that. And, all right, almost. So I found f of string required a string. Uh, 30, 27. Oh, okay, no. No, that's fine, that's fine. Oh, this one. It should probably be just a f of string, uh, just a string. It's just a helper method. All right. And there we go. Cool. So now we have random, we have console, we have fancy console. So uh, now we can actually go and, uh, and by the way, notice that I did it like so, so fast because it was just a mechanical thing, you know, console, uh, where is it? Console, uh, it clearly, you know, touches the console, right? Therefore, it clearly like side effects like a boss. Therefore, like everything is just delayed. Okay. Now fancy console. It doesn't know if you're gonna use like the real console or maybe something in your tests. Therefore, it doesn't need to delay anything. It just uses the console and that's all, right? So it doesn't see any, any side effects, anything over here. By the way, because we have a thing called console, um, anytime we're uh, accessing the ANSI codes, we would need to say scala.console, all right? Uh, yeah, so this is just a bunch of delegation, a bunch of uh, playing around with colors, all right? right? So this is just a helper method for, for the colors. And uh, yeah, so this is enough. So let's go to controller. Uh, let's open controller old and the new new thingy. All right. So at this point, we should be able to do that. All of these things, just put them in over here. So it's going to be just controller. Okay. And it's going to be a def DSL of F. Okay. So it's going to return a controller of F. Okay. So this is going to be the run of F which doesn't need the parents and it's going to be a val okay and uh you know for now it's just going to do that maybe even have that let's close the curly brace all right so it's going to uh okay we need we need to close more there we go okay so it's not going to use like anything that is old right old 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 like all of that stuff is going to go away um and therefore like these guys they would need an f right but we're using context bound from, from now on, right? So the boundary is also going to need uh, the F. So we're just gonna uh, put them over here. So it's gonna need the, uh, uh, the fancy console and it's gonna need the random as well, okay? And now we can remove these guys and maybe maybe we're actually lucky and this will fit into one line. Whoops. Um, no, it's not. All right, so this is all we need to do. We just have this, this thingy. And uh, let's start looking at run. So uh, run has like this vector of colors. It produces a random color. It has some hyphens. It produces this menu. Um, then it prompts uh, prompts the user, and then it just has this loop where it just keeps keeps going, like prompting prompting the user. Okay. So let's just go and start like copy pasting things from uh, from right to left and see how far we can get. Okay. So let's just have a scope over here. Put this guy over here. Okay, so that's just a bunch of colors. So I'm pretty sure that we can just paste it over here. Okay, that's fine. Um, a random color, okay? Just grab it, put it over here. And I'm pretty sure that it's just gonna be an F of string, okay? F of string, therefore it's gonna be a val, uh, right? So we don't have random anymore. We, we have just F and we can just say next end because it's defined on random, right? Over here, next end. So we can just do next end, um, and then it's going to produce an f of uh, an f of, of the color, um, and I'm sorry, an f of, of an integer, and we just need to pipe it into color. So as I, as I mentioned, I believe in the previous video, all the pipes they're going to be raised to maps. All the maps are going to be raised to traverse. So we just need a map over here, and therefore we need to request a functor. 
So I'm going to go over here. I'm going to say, please give us a functor. I believe we don't even have any cats imports for now. Yeah. Import cats. Import cats implicits. And let's see. Yeah. So that's all, right? So this is like the old style and this is the new style. Okay. So next thing is hyphens. So it uses the random color. Okay, so um, copy pasting is not going to help in this case, I believe. So if we do that, because we kind of need to like reverse these things. So, okay, first of all, we don't have in color. So in color, uh, okay, so at the bottom of the file, I just have like a bunch of helpers. Okay, which, I, how, do, how does this thing happen? How did this happen that it's, uh, that's so unnecessary, like these parents. I did not add them val like this all right so let's just copy copy paste them it's just like a bunch of constants and they are somewhere they're somewhere in um you can actually put them even here doesn't really matter they're now in the in the object all right so if we look over here so random color now gives us an f of string and we just need to map it right so we need to like kind of like uh swap this around okay right so this is because like it used to be um if i go up see like that's what happens if you if i sometimes use pipe and sometimes not so this used to be like random color uh pipe pipe in color i believe right whoops too much right so this used to be like that okay therefore if i copy paste that then i can just like you know lift a pipe to the map and then everything should be fine it's not uh, FS string require, okay, I forgot to change this here, like this. Great. All right, so now we have the menu and the menu accesses the hyphens, but the hyphens is now an F of string, okay? So what we need to do is we need to do something like this. And by the way, it can be a val now. Like all of these guys, it can be val now, vowels now, okay? So the menu is gonna be an F of string, and so it's gonna start with the hyphens, and then it's gonna do map, okay? And it's gonna have like this H over here, which is the hyphens. So now we can pretty much uh, grab this entire uh, menu, which is over here, and then we can paste it over here, and we're just going to use H over here, all right? Yes, so we're just going to move them over here. Cool, so this is a menu, right? So everything becomes like an F of something, uh, unless you have like, unless you have just like helpers like this, where like, I don't know, string comes in, string, string comes out. Um, okay. So, uh, let's keep going. Okay. Okay. So we have a prompt. Okay. So prompt is going to be uh, a val prompt uh, string, which is going to be F, right? Fancy console is now coming with a context bond and we're using this awesome plugin. F dot, and I believe that I called them exactly the same. So we're just going to do this. Okay. Like this. Now it's just going to be an F of string. All right. Super simple. Oh, menu is, menu is an F now. Okay, so we, we need to map one thing into another. So again, like it's it's another thing over here, right? So I could have done like menu.pipe, right? Menu.pipe into this thing, right? Like that, okay? And then I would be able to just copy paste it over here. And then I would see, oh, it's just another pipe. So I just need a map, okay? Like that, like that, come on. Why does it want to, oh, it's, it's already one line. All right, so now it's gonna say, uh, let's found value fancy console. Okay, it's F now, okay? Like this. All right, found F of string required string. Oh, oh, okay, so this is actually the first time that we need a flat map. So we need to go to functor, uh, copy paste it. And we need to say that this is gonna be a flat map. So it's gonna be a, a flat map. The only difference between map and flat map is that this B it is already uh, already inside of an app, okay? So let's cut this out, uh, create a file called flatmap, flatmap.scala, uh, put this here. It's just gonna be cats like this. Functor is not gonna have this anymore. Now, very uh, important is that sync, remember I told you that, it's not like the full-blown sync that is in cats or in cats effect. It's like only the parts that we need. Uh, so now we have something stronger, um, well, not something stronger, but um, Sync will also need flat map eventually. So we're going to go over here and we're going to say that it actually uses flat map of F, you know, with applicative. And flat map and applicative is actually a monad, 
So at this point, we might as well and just go and create monads. So we're going to have a monad over here, right? Because a monad is over here, uh, monad. It's just going to be a trade monad for f. Uh, it is just a functor. I'm sorry, it's just a flat map. Flat map f. Uh, let's do applicative first. It's applicative f was flat map. Okay, so when you, if you have like both of them, um, both of them together, uh, then you pretty much have um, have a monad. Uh, yeah, this f needs the parameter. Okay, so now we have a monad. Uh, let's go to uh, package and add the syntax, uh, which is somewhere over here. So we have the functor ops. Um, let me actually copy that. Usually copy pasting is not a good thing during my videos. I usually make a lot of mistakes when I copy paste. But anyway, so we just need flat map ops. Flat map ops. Okay, so for an F that is going to need a flat map like this. And it's going to have... It's going to have an inline def flat map B. Well, actually, we could just, again, I'm copy pasting again. So basically that. So that's just going to be a flat map. It's going to be a function that goes from A to F of B and F of B, A, F of B, F flat map. And at this point, um, this guy over there should be happy already in the in the menu, almost. Um, it should have been it should have been fine I'm not sure why it's not fine flat map f of a to a f of b um, where are we controller do we have all the imports cats cats implicits yes uh, maybe flat map f okay so let's let me look at this guy get string um, so it's in fancy console okay yes yeah, so it once a string produces an f of string yes that's exactly what flat map usually wants menu f of string you should be happy it should be fine now maybe we made a mistake somewhere else no two errors uh, value flat map. Oh, did we did we say that we need a flat map we didn't flat map All right, and yeah, so we need a flat map and we need a functor, okay? So we don't we don't need an applicative yet, so let's not request the monad just yet, okay? So we need a functor and we need a flat map. All right, so we have this, and uh, let's actually go back to the package object because I want to add like a similar helper as we have for like as. We're gonna have a, a similar helper for, um, uh, for flat map ops, okay? So we're gonna paste it over here. Um, so it's going to just take an f of b, okay? So this is just going to be an f of b like this. This is going to be an f of b, and therefore it's just going to be a flat map to f of b. Now in cats, the only name that it has is like these like two greater greater symbols like this. The only thing that you need to know about this is that this guy needs to be delayed, right? So this guy needs to be like this. Okay, just one of those like tricky things. By the way, notice how cool is the fear code jumping around is. Um, as I already mentioned in the previous video, I have a I have a VS Code plugin that disables ligatures once I'm uh, once my cursor is at the line. Right, so like this, jumping around. All right, so we're gonna use uh, use this guy a lot today actually. All right, so let's go to uh, controller. Uh, close the others. Uh, all right, so we have the prompt. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, so this one, this one we can pretty much copy paste. Exit, which is just that. This is just like, I, I only created it because uh, over here, like in this main menu, uh, this line was getting way too long and therefore like everything was getting like way too long over here. So I just, um, I just extracted it out, okay? It's just an unapply. It just uh, looks into the set if it's there. Um, as a reminder, set actually extends a function from string to boolean. So um, you know we don't need to do something like dot contains over here, right? Because you know dot apply is going to do exactly the same thing for sets. So yeah. Um, 
All right, Loop. Loop is going to be the most um, interesting one, actually, because um, Loop is uh, tail recursive. And there is no way in hell that we can uh, make our thing tail recursive because everything is going to be ra wrapped in an F. So if we're going to keep like repeating, we're going to need to do some like flat map and then, you know, to this other F. And so we're going to get buried in, t in, in this uh, in this stack of flat maps. This is this is one of the uh, very uh, particular caveats, well not, yeah, caveats um, of, of tagless final, is that you need to make sure that uh, your code is stack safe and your, stack, your, your code is only stack safe if your F is stack safe. So in our case, we're gonna implement IO ourselves and because this is just for education, it's not going to be stack safe and I will actually show you show this to you in a couple of videos from now once once we're actually gonna start running this application, um, you know, that, that um, the stack is going to be, uh, the stack is going to explode, you know, we're gonna have a stack overflow error. However, once we switch to the proper cats, the, the F over there, the IO over there is going to be trampolined and I have made a video about trampolines like two years ago or so and the way trampolines work is that, first of all, they move the computation from the stack to the heap and and the way they work is they uh, they compute a little bit of this description that we're you know we're only dealing with descriptions over here right and then it runs only this part right so in this particular case it would run only one iteration then it would go back you know it would jump around like a trampoline it would go back calculate the next part of the description and then run that then jump back calculate the next part of the description and then run, run that and th therefore your stack never grows right it has a little bit of a performance hit uh, you know if you want to watch my videos from two years uh, two years ago uh, but anyway the, the point is that uh, this caveat is just a theoretical concern in practice you're uh, you know you're never going to implement io yourself you know, a lot of, you know, smarter people than you and me have already implemented this in Cat's Effect and Monix or, or in Zio and all the other libraries to come in the future. If you're watching this in 2025 or whatever, like this video if you're watching this in 2025, just, <laughs> just for fun. And in any case, the code is going to look pretty much the same, um, but it's not going to be tail recursive. So we're going to grab, we're going to grab it like this, okay? like that and go over here and paste this over here right okay so first of all um i actually forgot one tiny thing so it calls a bunch of like helper methods so maybe we should have like those uh helper methods first so let me comment out this thing all right so um let's actually let me put my oh I'll put my cursor over here and do that and do that. And it looks like they all return unit. So over here, I'm just gonna go over here. I'm gonna paste them all uh, like that, like that. Mark that as well. Give me cursors in every line. So it's gonna be a val um, and they're all gonna return an F of unit. And for now, they're not gonna do anything. Okay, technically we can make them private, but because we're always coding against interfaces, I'm only making them private for readability reasons, right? Because like this class, this anonymous class over here, right? This one, um, this one, it's not gonna be visible anywhere. Like the whoever is going to use this thing, they're, they're all, all they're gonna see is this, right? So there's no need to make them private, but just for readability reasons, I'm making them private. All right, so let's go to the menu and, um, and do that like this. All right, it might actually even compile. Uh, okay, no, it doesn't compile because like all of them return F of unit, okay? So all we need to do is, notice that you, do, you know, we're doing like one, one jump and then whatever we, you know, we're passing a Boolean which, which basically controls if we should, you know, keep looping or not. And so we're, we're passing like whatever comes, whatever the Boolean comes out of this thing, we're passing it to another instance of loop, right? So essentially it's, it's piping, it's piping into loop, okay? If I do this, and if I do that, it's, you know, it's the same code as before. So let me actually comment out the whole thing real quick. I want to show it to you over here, right? So if you just uh, remove this loop from here and instead we pipe this thing into loop, then it's going to compile, but the compiler is going to complain about this, right? It's basically going to say um, expected by end of file. Okay, that's not what I wanted to show. It, I put it in the wrong place over here. Okay, so it's gonna complain about um, could not optimize tail rec stuff, right? But if I remove this, um, like from from the uh, you know from the behavior, is gonna be exactly the same. Okay, which is why this version doesn't doesn't use that. Okay, which is why this version does use that like this. Okay, but semantically there is a pipe 
over there. Whoops, not over there, like this. So semantically, there is a pipe, and again, like this, not going to be tail recursive, okay? And it's going to return an f of unit, f of unit, and uh, therefore, like this entire thing is going to return an f. Therefore, we need to flat map into another into another loop, okay? And also, we're going to need an else. And inside of the else, we need to produce like a unit, but we need an applicative now, so we need to do a pure f, right? Because we need to produce an f, okay? So we need to go up, and now we, we need to say, okay, we need a, a flat map and applicative and the functor, and like this whole thing is a monad, okay? So now we arrived at monads. Okay, so now that we have the monad, we can go over here, and notice that all of our like create, delete, and delete all, and they're returning an f of unit and if you have seen my video my playlist about monads you know like one of the ways to explain uh monads in a hand wavy way is to say that monads are a programmable semicolon and you see a clear example of it over here right so instead of using the semicolon we can just use flat map or we can actually use our helper that uh, you know because it, as you can see like the result of this computation is ignored it's just that a boolean is produced so we can just do that okay like this and over here, we should probably also wrap this into an F. And let's see if I did it correctly. Um, it's probably unhappy about this dot. So it probably wants that. Uh, oh yeah, we actually don't need a flat map. We can actually, in our case, as is enough, like this. All right, and let's actually, let's actually do that. Whoa, what did it just do? That. Oh my God, Scala FMT removes this because it thinks that it's unnecessary because it prefers the infix notation. No, 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 no. I want, I want the dot. Hold on. I want the dot and I want you to fix it like this for me. There we go. Okay. Prompt is actually an F of string. So it's never going to match this thing. So there's one thing that I, that I forgot to do and um, I forgot to, to switch map to flat map. This is what I forgot to do. Okay. So, um, uh, yeah, so remember like the, the pattern matching is basically partial functions. And so we're basically just piping. So piping, we're raising piping into map or in this particular case into flat map. And therefore I was surprised because in, in the preparation for my video, uh, for, in the preparation for this video, I actually didn't need these like uh, double curly braces. And as you can see, Scala FMT fixed, uh, fixed all, of this, um, all of this form. All right. So um, in any case, this is too low level because um, now we're in, in the functional programming world. And over there, we're dealing with teeny tiny descriptions and we can uh, compose them and repeat them and so on so if we look at this we're basically saying just hey just like run this whole thing until false is returned and we can actually go to monad we can go to monad and uh, we can add a combinator that will do this for us we're going to call it iterate while because that's how it's called in cats it's going to take an f of a and it's going to take a predicate predicate that is going to go from a to boolean okay and it's going to produce an f of a Okay, and it pretty much is going to do like the same thing as, as we did over here, right? So it's going to do like, first it does like, you know, prompt.flatmap. So it's going to take, you know, it's going to do like flat map f of a, right? Because we're not going to use the syntax over here, right? Flat map f of a. And now you have the a, okay? And now we'll, what are we doing over here? Well, we're, we're sticking it into, all right? So if we, we go into the loop, well, we're sticking it into this predicate thing, okay? So this is what we're going to do. So we're going to say if p of a, Okay, so if this is true, then, you know, uh, then, then, you know, keep looping, so to say. Okay, so we're going to do iterate while, iterate while. So we're going to pass in the f of a and the same predicate, right? So we'll just keep repeating. And otherwise, what are we doing in otherwise? Otherwise, we're just doing like pure f. Okay, so that's what we're going to do over here. Otherwise, it's just going to be pure, uh, pure a. It's actually, yeah, it's pure f, but it's like a unit. Okay. So there we go. So this thing is going to do like exactly the same thing for us. So now we can actually go into the package object. Um, this one. Okay. So we have flat map ops. Now we're also going to have uh, monad ops. Let me copy this. Let's do uh, monad. Monad ops. That's going to be in monad. Okay. So now we're going to put in uh, the iterate while in there. Inline def iterate while p a to boolean this is going to be an f of a and this is going to be f dot iterate while f a and p all right so now we can go back to the controller and uh we can essentially just grab like the the essence right which is um which is this pattern match well we kind of need like to have the prompt as well so 
Um, so this is like the essence of this whole loop and calling loop and all of that stuff. Okay, so now we can just go over here, paste it, okay, and just over here say iterate while. So now it needs a predicate from whatever is returned to Boolean. In our case, a Boolean is already returned. So if what is returned is true, then, you know, that, that keep iterating. So we can just pass an identity, okay? And so this thing now gives, gives us an F of Boolean, but, you know, we're in run, right? So we're implementing run over here and run needs an f of unit so we already have a helper for that so we can just over here we can just say dot void dot void okay and now it does this whole thing for us so now we can go and remove this entire loop thing Ta -da! like this okay much shorter and this is like this is like where the beauty of functional programming comes from right you can just, you're dealing with descriptions right they didn't explode yet you can just you know uh, say, you know, repeat this thing forever and so on without like loops or anything like this. Uh, very, very beautiful. All right, I believe we actually uh, finished run. Uh, let's see. Yeah, we actually finished run. So now all we need to do is we need to implement all of these helpers. It looks like a lot, uh, but it's actually not going to be not going to be that much. So let's look at create. Uh, let's go over here. Uh, let's find create. Okay, so it does like description prompt. Okay, so description prompt is over here. So let's start with that. So let's go and do description prompt. Do, 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 do. Let's go over here. Let's put it over here. It's just going to be a val. It's going to be an f of string. Okay, so it's just going to be an f over here. I believe that's actually it. By the way, like this thing, get string line trimmed was prompt. If you go in there, uh, you're going to see that it um, it adds a space after the prompt. And whatever comes back, like whatever the user put in, it's going to be trimmed. All right, let's go back more over here. Cool. Uh, all right, so the next thing is that it uses is with deadline prompt. Okay, so let's go there. With deadline prompt uses deadline prompt. Okay, let's go there. Okay, so it's a prompt that is like similar to this guy. All right, so it's a private val f of and f over here it it uses this variable deadline prompt f uh, format which is like at the bottom this one uh prompt format this one in color and magenta all right uh cool so okay let's go back to create again okay so we already have this then we have with deadline prompt uses deadline prompt what else does it use it uses two local date time Okay. Okay. So this is the function where I was, um, I was just playing around. I tried, I tried to do some sort of like validation. Uh, technically we don't need any of it, but, um, you know, just to save some time, let's just go and copy paste it. Okay. So let's see, what does it use? Um, we have that, we have that, we have that. Yeah. I think it should just work. Private dev to local date time. Okay. So I believe that we actually don't need to change it. We don't need any apps or anything like this. I believe this should be fine like this. Yeah, it's fine. Okay, so, um, okay, where was it? Um, it was over here. So it was using that lamp prompt. We already have that. We have that. Uh, we have that. We have on success comes in over here. Okay, I feel like we have everything that we need. Okay, so uh, let's go here. So with that land prompt, let's put it over here. All right, so let's create more space. So first of all, like these units, they're gonna be Fs, okay? And then I said that the pipes are gonna be maps, like this, okay? Uh, fancy console is gonna be F, all right? Cool, it compiles. So this is the perfect example. We actually have a bug over here, okay? We have a bug over here because um, Scala, since the very beginning, uh, implicitly converts um, anything to to unit. All right, so we need to produce an f of unit over here. So at this point, uh, we have an f of either string or a local date time. Okay, and so what what comes out is an f of unit, but we're using map, and therefore it looks at this f of unit. Right, so like this put error, for example, right? So this is an f of unit, right? So if you go in there, it's an f of unit, right? But because we called map, like accidentally, um, the, the Scala compiler went ahead and converted this f of unit to a unit because it can convert anything to a unit. Now, there is a way to, um, to guard yourself against this. Uh, if we go to build, 
uh, we're actually going to enable fatal warnings and we're actually going to enable one of these warnings and this warning is going to be value discard right so it's gonna it's gonna warn you when when exactly things like this um, happen I forgot to have yes there we go we got to have because now it should not have compiled yes so it produces warnings now but because we have like fatal warnings um, it's, it actually doesn't com doesn't compile now and also let's import bloop um, just in case okay so um, first of all we have some like older things where where, where uh, the values are discarded um, so let's go and since Scala 2132 2 actually which is which is what we're currently on if you go to build we're actually in Scala 2.13.2. Uh, we actually finally have, an, have the ability to uh, suppress warnings. So um, we can go and uh, find uh, these guys. In fact, uh, Bloop actually finished compiling, so it can actually tell us uh, where it is. Okay, so we can go over here. Like This is the old code, and we don't really care about it. So we can say um, add Scala annotation dot no warn we could also pass in parameters and to be very explicit about like uh, you know the the ones that we want to um the ones that we want to uh suppress but in this particular case we don't really care annotation no warn let's actually copy this one okay where else uh, if i press f8 it's just going to jump to the next one okay this one let's do that okay and now f8 and yeah, so we finally ended up being over here, which is exactly where I want it to be. So it basically tells us that it discards a non-unit non-unit non, uh, non, non value. And this is how we know, oh, sorry, I meant flat map. Okay, and now it goes away. Awesome, uh, let's keep going. Uh, so we have with deadline prompt, uh, which means we have with the prompt, which means that it's used over here. So what do we have over here? So we already have that. We already have that. Uh, we already have that. We already have, yeah, we, we have everything. So we can just grab the create and go to create and just paste it in. Okay. And everything should, okay. So this is a clearly a flat map and this is create one and yeah so this is going to be like this um this symbol over here and this is going to be an f okay and in fact in this particular case uh what does it say description prompt uh doo -doo 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 -doo. reference to an initialized value description prompt oh, okay because they're they're both valves okay so let's uh, move this guy up <laughs> it's fine SPT finished faster than bloop somehow. Uh, all right, so let's do that and that and that and that, that, like this. All right, so it's much more beautiful now, right? So this is basically a flat map where we don't care what, what it did, right? So it created a thing and now we just want to print something out. So this is how, this is how you would usually do it, okay? And by the way, like, notice like this, this pattern, like this like callback hell kind of pattern. Um, it's it's very common and in fact like two two years ago when I created the original videos like this I structured it like this even though like back then we didn't know anything about monads right and back then I even mentioned that I said like hey this is like monadic style so if everything went well with the description prompt then uh, we're gonna call a deadline prompt with deadline prompt right and over here the deadline is gonna come back Mmm, I smell monads. And um, usually you would see like four comprehensions being used, but in this particular case, things are not so simple. And so most of the times, unless it's like really, like really, really nested, I prefer not to use four comprehensions. All right. In any case, it's all good. We're getting the description. We're getting the deadline. Remember when we're creating to do is we're being prompted to, you know, type in the description, type in the deadline, then we're going to create something and then we're going to say successfully created the new to do. All right. Uh, cool. Let's keep going. Uh, we're pretty much done, actually. Like all the, all of the others, they will, you know, they will ask you for the same prompts and so on and so on. Um, all right. Delete. Why is delete the next one? Uh, what is actually the next one? Is it the next one over here? Yeah, it is the next one. All right. So it uses with ID prompt. Okay, this one, this one we don't have with ID prompt. Okay, so it uses the ID prompt. Okay, so it uses like these two guys. So we can pretty much copy these two guys and go over here paste them okay so this is going to be a val uh this is going to be an f of string this is just going to be an f now it can actually fit into one line uh same thing here unit unit f and now we're smarter and we're going to do flat map and over here we're going to do map oh 2id i didn't notice that it was using 2id 
what is 2ID? 2ID is, oh, yeah, so I was trying like to add some sort of validation, you know, like, oh, if like, if, if you type something in that is empty, it's gonna tell you that it's not a valid ID and stuff. So yeah, whatever, uh, we could actually just throw it out, but fine, let's just add it. Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. Yeah, I don't know why, like during the preparation for this video, it happened to me as well, like you see this, these lines over here, this is just a VS Code thing to, to show me like in which scope I am. I see like these lines, like uh, now it's like over here, now it's over here, now it's over here. This is a VS Code bu bug because like what happened now is that it actually copied them as pipes. So I actually uh, don't want like these pipes and I don't want these pipes like this. Let's see if this is enough. Yeah, this is enough. And uh, yeah, it was enough. All right, so now we can implement delete. Delete is, delete is, okay, we have this now, we have this now, we have these guys now. Okay, we have everything. Cool, super easy. And delete, which is like this. And that's gonna be that. And that's gonna be an F. Oh, with read one, we don't have with read one. I forgot about this one. With read one, where is it? So what does it do? Boundary, blah, blah, blah. Okay, it looks simple. So let's just grab it. And uh, okay, ID prompt to ID, blah, blah, blah. Let's put it over here. Okay, so yeah, so that's gonna be, that's gonna be Fs and therefore that's gonna be flat map. And that's it. Okay, we also need this one, display. So like this is just a, uh, just a display thing and I believe we're using it twice and um, therefore it's in a private def. So we're gonna go and okay, so this is a def, so we can have it over here, make it a bound, uh, make it an f of unit, f of unit, f, f, and that's it. Yay! Delete works now, let's make it more handsome. Uh, okay, so let's not do this, let's not do that, let's not do that, let's go here, control JJ, join lines, no, not like this, join lines, like this, yeah, beautiful, this is the delete, uh, what's the next one, next one is delete all, it's probably going to be simple, uh, delete all, uh, boundary delete, yeah, okay, that's like, that's like nothing, okay, delete all, like that, paste that in, that's going to be, that's going to be that, like this, enter like that like that like that this is going to be f and uh, we don't need these guys like this okay that's how delete all looks like uh show all okay show all show all is gonna read all pipe into display zero or many uh ooh, okay mm -hmm. To do's. Oh, notice that we have like this guy and this guy, right? So this is like a flat map and there is a map inside of it. But we're probably going to need traverse over there. Let's see. Let's do this guy. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Show all. This is what we're doing. Put it over here. Okay. So, yeah. So this is an F. Therefore, like this needs to be an F. Okay. Let's see, this is an F as well. Okay, so we're putting this thing, we're, we're printing out like found some to-dos, then we probably need a flat map, I'm guessing. I'm guessing we need a flat map. And now we cannot, yeah, so this is what I predicted. So we're doing map rendered was pattern. No, this is not what I predicted. It just says that we don't have it. Uh, rendered was pattern, where is it? Okay, it's just a, it's just a to-do to string. We can totally copy paste it. There we go. All right, so now it complains about, okay, we found a unit, but I wanted to go, uh, a function that goes from unit to f of unit. Um, maybe we don't even need that. Maybe we actually need that. And now it says found unit required f of unit. Hold on. I required f of unit. Okay, so first of all, it doesn't need to do for each print line. It's gonna need to do probably flat map and f dot. I think it's called put put string line. 
we don't need a flat map over here we need a traverse and now it should only not compile because it says that uh, we have a f of vector of unit but we just need an f of units right so we can just um, we can just void the whole thing like this all right so let's remove that uh, let's remove that let's remove the dot let's join the lines over here and have it like that right so this makes more sense right we're printing something out right so we're ignoring that thing so we don't need a flat map you know we don't need to, to do flat map and then you know underscore to the right right we can just use like these these fancy things so we're printing something out and then we're doing that right so we have a bunch of we have a bunch of to do's we're sorting them by deadline uh, we're converting them to strings and now we need to do this traverse trick all right traverse trick because f put string line already returns an f okay so we need a traverse and then we just need to um to to, to throw out right so we're, we're printing it out line line by line and so we have like a, a an f of a vector of um of these lines so to say but we don't need them all right so we're just going to do a void great i believe this was uh probably the most complicated one okay so we're still doing show all and show all is doing boundary reload okay so i believe that this is fine like this so show all is going to do that and that's going to be flat map like this great cool what's left search by partial description it looks like a lot is left but we're pretty much done i swear uh search by partial description uh we already have that we already have that we already have that so we just take them, go here, and in this particular case, I believe these are going to be flat maps, like this. Yay! All right. Search by ID. We have that. We have that. We have. Oh, why are we doing this? Hold up. Ah, because it's an option. All right. So we're we're finding one thing, um, but we need a vector for some reason. Oh, yeah because we, we have a function that displays like many things uh right but i believe we have everything over here search by id over here paste it in all right so we have blah 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 so that's gonna be that's probably a map and that's a flat map yeah good guess all right uh up to description um update description we have that we have that we have do we have that yeah we have that we have that i think we have everything we need copy and update description like this is one of those things where where the code is pretty much going to stay like exactly the same pipe is going to be flat map and tab as is going to be this thing and then we're just going to have an f over here right so this is what i meant like when i designed this thing i already had like monads in mind all right, so let's just do like this typical thing over here, over here, over here, and join this line. And it looks weird. It should not look weird. Oh, it looks weird because of this, right? So, so it usually, usually it should look like a like a letter kind of thing, you know? Um, yeah. So update deadline. We're almost done. Update deadline. It's gonna be very similar. Update deadline. <laughs> yeah, I think we have everything. Copy, up to deadline, paste over here. So what are we gonna have? Flat map is already built in over here as well, over here as well. Uh, so we just need this and F, yes. There we go, like this, like this, like that, JJ. And, ah, this is how, this is how these empty lines are being created. All right. And the last one is exit, and it looks very adorable. So we can just do this, and we can just go over here, and we can just do F. And by the way, uh, the reason why this thing is called put string line is because this is how it's called in Haskell. Okay, and uh, yeah, I believe this is this is actually it. This is the entire controller, which was like 249 lines of code, and it's almost the same as you know as, as the lines of code that we had before it's even even a little bit shorter somehow it got shorter did we forget something whoops uh run da -da 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 -da. it's all good it's all good yeah when, when i'm gonna see it running today i'm gonna see this only in the next video so um you know maybe like in the past like two or three videos uh i i, I made some mistakes but you know happens we're gonna fix them once once we once we get there I'm gonna cross that bridge once we're there um this line is kind of long 
let's do that. Um, do we have this over here as well? Yeah, let's do that. Um, ba -ba 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 -ba. Looks good, looks good, looks good, looks good. Yeah, beautiful. And notice that, that like for the most part it stayed stayed the same. I know it feels like it feels like we changed a lot, but for the most part, like this whole structure, it kind of stayed the same. Granted, it's because like I prepared really well for for this one. You know, I refactored a lot of code from the version that was like two years ago. If you go like and c compare it to the version that was two years ago, it's gonna be like slightly different. Uh, but yeah, still. All right, let's look uh, what we changed and um, um, hold up like this. Flat map ops, monad ops. So we pretty much have the monad. Uh, we have the flat map, have the monad uh, with this fancy thing. We have the sync that now goes to the monad. It's very, very close, by the way, to um, to how it looks like now in cat's effect. So right now in cat's effect, it instead of extending monad, it goes to the monad arrow. In fact, it goes to the bracket, and the bracket goes to the monad arrow. And bracket is just an execution context for uh, for blocking operations, and I believe in cat's effect three, like this is actually the part that is going to be separated. Probably like the bracket is not going to be there. So this is just going to be a monad arrow for f and um, throwable. All right. And by the way, I don't think that we're going to have any arrow handling even in the end of the playlist. Maybe we will, maybe I'll get bored and I'll add it anyway, but um, I feel like we already have enough videos about um, error handling. You can go and check them out. All right, controller. Um, okay, there's no point in like looking at all of this. It's way too much. Uh, console, same thing. Console old, fancy console. Uh, random. Uh, dependency graph, just like renames. Main, just the rename. And in the build, we have this guy. Let's actually remove this this line unused, and uh, yeah, yeah. So did the delivery now depends on its effect. Let's also import the build just because we can. Uh, all right, so let's go over here and um, just do that. That's going to be video video eight. All right, and do that. All right, and I actually believe that, um, yeah, like these these previous videos, I, I wanted to include like part six and part seven. So uh, let's actually, let's actually do that. Uh, okay, not like this, GL, GRBI, no, hold on. GL, let's grab, uh, I don't know, this guy. Copy, GRBI, uh, that guy. I like this. Uh, what do we want? We want to rename this one, um, and we want to rename this one as well. Yeah, that's that's what we want. All right, so that's going to be video seven, part six. Whoops, and that's going to be video eight, part seven, like this. All right, so there we go. Six part four. <laughs> yeah. It's all good. All right, so let's force push. There we go, let's go see. Let's go see, click on commits, which should be 10 now, not nine. Yeah, so part seven. Edit flat map, edit monad, um, edit the syntax, edit that. Console is fine, it's all good, it's all good. A bunch of apps everywhere, look how similar it is. A bunch of apps, some pipes turned into maps, some pipes turned into flat maps, some pipes turned into traverses. Uh, ba -ba 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 -ba, it's all good. Okay, that's the controller. It's gonna take, take a while to scroll down. And that's just the rename. And uh, yeah, we added the value discard, very important. And uh, yeah. That's it. Cool. So in the next video, we're going to um, finish this first iteration of improvements. We're gonna, you know, improve a lot of things. We're gonna um, implement our version I/O, which is gonna, you know, have an instance for for sync. It's not gonna be stack safe, and I'm gonna show you that it's gonna explode. And um, we're also probably gonna uh, switch to the real version of Cats for the first time. Then we're probably gonna remove it again uh, because we're gonna continue talking about, um, you know, things like atomic refs and. Um, and the DSLs for them in Cat's Effect. Anyway, 
a ton of cool stuff and probably like the videos after that we're gonna bolt in uh, bolt a real database on top of it and uh, then probably also a, a web server on top of it so uh, yeah in any case that's the future music for now as always it's been Vlad devinsideyou.com don't forget to like this video if you did subscribe if you want to improve the developer inside you and if you learned something today consider supporting me on Patreon or GitHub and thus watch all of my videos well some of my videos weeks and even months before everyone else and most importantly take care